Well, I would say needless to say, but it's not needless to say. I want to say that's a good win. Um, we, we needed that win, and obviously, um, and it feels good. But what, what the best part about this is that it was a complete team effort. I mean, you look at the stat sheet and see five guys in double figures, that's one thing. But what you don't see on the stat sheet is the guys who didn't play who were playing the University of Washington's offense and defense for us all week long. And once again, my team uh, sort of stands up for me when I'm absent. Uh, we, we had to have a good practice this week. And of course, I'm out of town. And I'm watching Monday's practice on tape. And these guys didn't treat it as if there was a substitute teacher there. They treated it as if I was there. And that, was, that makes you feel good as a coach and as a teacher that, that, that the guys take, take what they're doing seriously enough that when you're not there, they still do what they're supposed to do. And then I came back yesterday, and, and you know, obviously I'm exhausted, but I don't, I don't want to say it to the guys. And just seeing their excitement for the game and the practice got me going again. So this was a complete team effort. Uh, from top to bottom, you know, walk on uh, uh, scholarship guys to walk ons, uh, and with that, I'll just open it up for questions. I know you guys have deadlines and things. Staying together uh, in the second half has been a, kind of a trouble area for you guys. But at what point do you feel that you guys kind of overcame that? that well, you know, what was different about this was that we I thought we had our lull at the end of the first half. <laughs> And I was thinking, okay, maybe that's a way to get it out of the way. And in the second half, what was different was that we didn't have trouble scoring. And we had trouble stopping them, but we didn't have trouble scoring right at the beginning there. And then, uh, so that gave us a little bit of confidence on the offensive end. And it wasn't until later in the second half where they were making their run where we needed to kind of refocus our defensive efforts. So uh, again, there's no magic potion in that locker room at halftime. And what we have to avoid doing is feeling like we're going to have a letdown in the second half. We have to come out as confident as we did at the beginning of the game. How about the locker room after the game? Was it a celebration? Uh, no, no. These guys have won games before, and they know we got a lot of work to do. Uh, I, would, I would say there is probably a little relief there. Uh, and there was uh, happiness about winning, legitimate happiness, but there wasn't like a slapping around high five. No, no, we have a lot of work to do and we have a lot of basketball to play. And what you saw uh, was what we are capable of doing, but have even still more that we can accomplish. Mm-hmm. I mean, from your vantage point, were you seeing that as well? Oh, yeah. Desperate times call for desperate measures. That's what I, th I think that's what they were feeling. I mean, they came ready to play, and they felt like that. You know, we talk about all the time how we all try and get ourselves prepared, but once you roll the ball out there or throw the ball up, it's, it's, it's up to those guys from an effort standpoint, and I thought they just they answered the bell. Um, <clears throat> I could see it, and then I, you know, you do your best as a coach to try and 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 let it permeate through the whole game, not just the the very beginning. What creates the? You mentioned the ball. What creates that? I I I if I knew, I would fix it immediately. What I what I try to keep them aware of is that the lull might be created by the fact that you think there's going to be a lull. So you, you just have to execute and fall, fall back on your fundamentals, which we've been talking about during this whole this, this, this negative stretch here. We've been talking about let's get back to our fundamentals and, and do the things we, we know how to do both offensively and defensively, which brings me to uh, when Washington made their run and cut it to one or tied, did they, did they ever tie it? No. So they never tied it. So they cut it to one. And we refocused our defense and started making stops, getting scores, making stops, and then we stretched it back out to six or seven or whatever it ended up uh, being during that stretch. That gave us our own confidence, and then we were back to playing the way we were in the first half. In the second half, it seemed like you played your kind of top five guys more so than almost any half I can remember this year. Why, why was it? 
because they were playing well. I mean, usually um, I would take the guys out if they were not playing well or they weren't playing hard or they were tired or they needed a blow. Um, tonight in the second half, I took them out when they needed a breather, and then I put them right back in. And, and I'll, I'll use Roberto Nelson as a perfect example. He didn't have the greatest shooting night. You know, what was he, 3 for 14 or 3 for 13, something like that? And yet he was very effective in the game because he was defending. He was, he was getting a lot of hustle plays. Uh, you know, so that was, you know, it's a feel thing for me. It's like, you know, we're trying to win. We're trying to, to snap out of a slump. What's the best way to do it? Go with the guys who are playing well. No, no. You know, with these guys, they, you don't. I, I don't have to send a message. I can just tell them what I want. Um, I can just tell this group what I want. They know. They've been in a lot of wars, and they've, they, they've, they. We're trying to bring this program up to a level where there's high expectations, and uh, I, th I, I think for the first time in a long time, the, the locker room put the expectations on themselves. He started more than in the second half. Well, he, we, he was playing well, and, and, and I told Jamal at halftime, this wasn't, he didn't do anything wrong. I just figured I'd try a different lineup coming out of halftime, and maybe he would, if, if they got on a run, he'd block a shot or get a rebound or something. Uh, so, you know, in my mind, I'm trying all kinds of things or thinking about all kinds of things, and I decided to try this. I try Eric this time, and, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Seemed like Moreland's length really bothered Wilcox. I think you're right, but I thought Jamal did a good job on him too. I, I thought I thought our, all of our guys, because not 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 uh, each time down were either of those guys on him. At, at times Roberto was on him, and at times Charlie Barton was on him, and so. But I, I I know what you mean. I think when you when you're a player, I know when I'm a player. And a guy who's that much taller and longer than me is on me, who's, who can keep up with me, that's disturbing. Uh, so I hope you're right. I thought Eric did a pretty good job on him, but I also think that uh, we did it, we, the, the team did a good job on him as a whole. How much of a success kind of comes from creating those turnovers and running fast break? Well, you know, that, that's our style. That's, that's the one thing that's been consistent since we've been here. Even when we were playing slower, we would use our defense to generate some offense in the in the in the transition set, uh, sense of the uh, of the game, um, but it's been a while since we've been able. You know, we've we've caused turnovers and then couldn't convert, and uh, this was a game where we caused some turnovers and was able to keep that points off turnovers number higher than it's been. Let's see, point C. So we had 17 points off turnovers. I don't. I. I it's been a while. You know, that was something we focused on on defense. I mean, on defense. At practice, we needed to get back to moving the ball, sharing the ball. I mean, this, this, the, the, my favorite number tonight is 18 assists on 25 baskets. When we play like that, we're hard to beat. Wow, I would have, did he say what, what it was? I'd have to look at the tape to give you a, a specific answer. Uh, it didn't feel like it. I mean, you know, Lorenzo's pretty consistent. I thought he played us the way he's always played us. He puts Aziz on, the, on Devon and puts another guy on Joe. And um, I'm trying to, I, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to imagine what it is that we got that we don't normally get. Um, you know, we, we, they like to overplay, so we cut back door. There's no secret to that. So I don't think that's what he's talking about. I don't. I, I, I'm at a loss. But if that's the case, I'll I'll see it on the tape and hopefully figure out how to do it when we play him the next time. <laughs> a lot bounced back nicely from the LA trip. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah, he did. And uh, the poor kid has just been up and down. And uh, and. Whatever it is that has that gets him up, I got to figure it out. And whatever it is that that brings him back down, I got to get rid of because you know Ahmad is one of those players on our team that when he does well, everybody feels good about our team. It's it's amazing. You know, some guys have that. 
you know, Roberto will play well. The guys are like, okay, Roberto's supposed to play well. You know, Joe plays well. It's like, okay, yeah, all right. But when Ahmad plays well, it's like we can beat anybody. I don't know why that is. Is it because he's a small guy? Is it because he can make threes? Is it because, um, you know, he's from Chicago? I have no idea. Well, you got to remember the second team is a little skewed when you have Eric on the second team. I mean, you know, what we really have is two. We have a first team without Eric and the second team with Eric. It's it it that's part of the reason. But the teaching point for the first team during those practices when you say things like that is that it doesn't matter who you're playing against, you have to put out the effort to beat them, even if it's your second string team. And that's what we're trying to get across to the, to the first team that, listen, anybody can beat you guys if you don't play well. If you play well and play hard, then you lose the game, you feel like, okay, these guys beat us. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. Well, that's, Stephen, that's a very good point because these guys care for each other so much that you don't have your typical leader who gets on everybody. That's me. You know, I need one, one of those guys to do that on the floor when I can't run out there and get them going. Uh, so that's good and bad. I mean, the, the bad part about it is you, in, in a tough game against a team like Washington who knows how to win all the time, you need somebody out there to be vocal and be s smacking guys on the butt and saying, hey, you're supposed to do things this way and that way. The good part about it is they do work hard for each other. I mean, they are absolutely fear, they, they are fearful of letting their, other, their teammates down. It, at some point, it's going to flip and that's going to work to our advantage and we're going to have somebody rise up and be that sort of vocal leader. Is there a way to be kind of coach that at, from, from a coaching perspective in a way that you take those emotions and, and push them over the edge a little bit where now they, it, that emotion turns into a fire that they can have, that they had in the first half that they have. Yeah, the I try on a daily basis to make them afraid of me, but uh, that, that, that hasn't worked. Uh, but there, that, you know, I, I feel it coming. I feel it coming. Uh, and I see it in their confidence. When, when uh, before, before this game, you wouldn't be have believed that locker room was 0-5. And, you know, I can say that now that we won the game, but I'm sitting there, you know, getting prepared for, to do the interviews and, and game preparation, and I'm listening to that locker room. Those guys thought they were going to win the game. Somehow I got to get them to think like that on a constant basis, you know, it's, it, but it's, it, it, is, it is psychological, it is emotional, but it's very consistent because we play very well when we're behind. Always have. Oh, they did. Okay, I didn't know. They, they did. They they did not win. They did not win. Okay. Well, that I mean, that's going to be a hard game for us. I I haven't. The way I work, I looked at tapes for this game. I'm, uh, you know, I was so focused on Washington, and I I knew I had such little time to prepare, um, that I'll take a look at Washington State. But I tell you, that dude Brock Modem scares me. He always has. I mean, you know, he, if you can stop him, you can stop them. But it's hard to stop him. So, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna watch tape tonight. Get ready for practice tomorrow, and uh, you know hopefully we can put together back to back good games like this. With, the extra, with all the minutes you put on this, that first unit tonight, the nice to have the extra day. Oh yeah, game. yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that was you know, again, uh, Grady the the thought process, that, that's in my mind the whole time. That's why I could play those guys a little bit longer, because I knew we'd have an extra day. 
uh, and and it's great to be able to do that. And it's also great, and, and you can do that a little bit more when you're at home as opposed to being on the road. So that means you like Wednesday games? Or? See, here's, it's funny. I like any game when we're on TV. So, you know, you have to remember, I grew up in the Ivy League where you played Friday, Saturday. So Friday, Sunday, or Thursday, Saturday is no big deal to me. Wednesday, Saturday is like a vacation for me. So. Um, I don't mind. I want, I want us to be on television as much as possible. I want us to play high-profile games. So, you know, I'd play back-to-back -back games if we had to, and they were going to be on, on national television. Is the extra day <clears throat> good emotionally, too? I mean, you know, it probably is. It probably is. Um, but I think once you get into the conference season, the games come up on you so fast that, you're, you know, you're going to be – you're going to be emotionally drained anyway, you know, going week in, week out. Uh, I think that having that extra day gives you a chance to calm down rather than ramp up. That's good. That's good. Late night. <laughs> <laughs>